I am probably the oldest living stand-up comic. That all depends on what you mean by the word living. Uh, I've been an actor all my life, but this is kind of uh, new to me, a solo act of uh, being a stand-up comic for the first time. So be gentle. <laughs> and try to respect me in the morning. <laughs> stand-up comedy is a young man's game. I'm not a young man. I am, in fact, in my late, late, very, very late 70s. <laughs> I'm 83. <laughs> My friends tell me I don't look it. In fact, when we go clubbing, I'm the only partner. Uh, by a show of hands, uh, how many here are over 60? There you go. You're my demographic. And everyone's welcome. I, I want to have a big tent. I like to be inclusive. Appeal to my base. Most of them are asleep by now. But in any event, when... Uh, a young comic starts out, he usually goes to an open mic night to try out. When I was young, we didn't have open mic nights. We didn't have mics. <laughs> we weren't that open. <laughs> anyway, in preparation, I bought this book, How to Be a Stand-Up Comic. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to go through it. sister here that most comedians usually start out with, so uh, here we go. <clears throat> Are you ready for some comedy? <laughs> okay. uh, try to share something personally with, okay, by show of hands, how many have ever gone back to your high school reunion? Wow. <laughs> I recently went back to mine. First time. It was our 65th. <laughs> there were three of us. <laughs> they had a swing band there. <laughs> and we did some jitterbugging. <laughs> and there were two of us. <laughs> suggested a game, and we did musical chairs. <laughs> then there was me. <laughs> but it was a good party. I had a lot of fun. I was the last to leave. <laughs> now, talk about yourself. Uh, I come from West Virginia, uh, a little bit of a backward state. Uh, my town didn't have a theater group, it didn't have a ballet, it didn't have an art gallery. I must say that they did have a museum, a real museum right there in town, with a rather extensive collection of coal. <laughs> Politics. Yeah, they suggest you talk about politics. Well, I recently decided to release my tax returns. <laughs> Not all of them. Just the last 55 years. <laughs> I think that's all America needs to know. <laughs> Share your journey with your audience. I first came to Los Angeles to be an actor many years ago, and of course, actors can't usually make any money right away. They have to take part-time jobs as waiters or whatever. I looked around. I didn't want to be a waiter, and I, I took a part-time job at a place called Four Day Tire. <laughs> and I still didn't have money to make the rent at Four Day Tire, so I got a second part-time job at Three Day Blind. <laughs> church. <laughs> and I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, so it seemed to work out all right. Uh, 
I uh, began working in the movies, and I played the fathers. I played Molly Ringwald's father in Sixteen Candles. And after that, I got tight to be a father. And then I got older and became a grandfather. And uh, um, I finally decided I'm almost too old now to be grandfathers, even. <laughs> I'm beyond, beyond the pale. But I still get auditions. And the other day, I went to an audition for a part, and I looked at the script, and I said to the casting director, you think I'm a little too old for this part? <clears throat> she says, no, not at all. Just leave your daguerreotype with the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Pet peeves. Talk about what bugs you. Here's one thing that bugs me. Now, I may be old-fashioned. Maybe. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I don't like it when women are always burying their breasts accidentally in public. <laughs> How many began with the Super Bowl and the wardrobe malfunction and J-Lo at the Oscars? And everywhere you go, it's just lower and lower and lower. And maybe it's just me being old-fashioned and uh, I just don't think it's right. Uh, maybe some of you agree with me. By a show of nipples. <laughs> <laughs> for me is, and I think this could be universal, is uh, losing your socks in the laundry. I have a drawer full of socks. They're all paired up. Another drawer just has the socks that don't belong to anybody. They're like orphans. And I know I should throw them out. They're never coming back. But I kind of think I should hang on to them until they return. But there they sit all by themselves. They seem so lonely. It's kind of sad. I always wanted to take an ad out in the paper for them. <laughs> Single white sock. <laughs> Looking for soulmates. Athletic. <laughs> Likes poetry. Long walks on the beach. Well, long walks. Movies. <laughs> There's another comment. <laughs> but he's not as old as I am. Uh, sex. Well, all those comics in the nightclubs talk about sex. Did you ever find yourself in bed with someone? You know, she's there and you're right in the middle of it. And right there, right in the middle of it. She has to get up and go find her social security check. <laughs> uh, dating, they talk about dating in the book. I just recently got back into the dating scene because I hadn't been dating uh, for the last several decades. <laughs> uh, so I went to uh, looking and uh, a lot of guys my age or even younger, middle-aged, they always feel if they're starting over after a divorce or something that they should find someone really, really young. I think that's ridiculous. You should find someone really that you like and who understands you and you sort of relate to each other on a human level. But I, I did go onto this website and met a girl. Nineteen, twenty, born in nineteen twenty. I should have known. I found her on geezer.com. Anyway, she sent me a picture of herself. She was standing in front of a car. It was an old model, which is okay. She's an older person, uh, and she looked pretty good, actually. I mean, she'd had work done on the car. <laughs> Both looked pretty good. So she asked me for a picture, and I, I had told her I was an actor, but I still wanted to put my best foot forward. So I sent her an 8 by 10 picture of Brian Dennehy. <laughs> met for lunch, I think she was disappointed. <laughs> and I think Brian was too. <laughs> anyway, we we did date for a short while, but it, it didn't work out. It was nobody's fault. 
Just little things came between us. I couldn't remember her birthday. <laughs> she forgot my name. <laughs> so I told her, well, it's over. We have to not see each other anymore. And it worked out pretty well, except I had the feeling that she might be following me. She might be kind of hanging around still. What was odd is that my, uh, my stalker had a walker. <laughs> send her an email because I can't send emails and tell her that uh, it's over, we're not going to see each other anymore. So that was the end of that. The last I heard was a rumor that she was now stalking Brian Dennehy. <laughs> <laughs> that was all a lie, you know. I'm not really dating anybody. I'm married, happily married, quite a number of years. My wife and I get along very, very well. We agree on almost everything. Uh, we decided we like to give back to the community, and we saw these signs on the freeways. It says, adopt a highway. <laughs> and uh, sometimes corporations do it. In my neighborhood in the valley, Ben Midler had adopted a highway. So we decided to go through, through with that and adopt a highway. Because the thing is, my wife can't have highways. <laughs> we wanted to bring the presence into our life of a little one, a little stretch of one. And I think is that when you adopt a highway, it's a long waiting list, and you never know what your highway is going to look like. But we went through with it, really. Really adorable. <laughs> really, I'm, I wish I had the pictures with him because I'm, I know I'm not the highway's biological father. <laughs> I know that. But if you look at the pictures, it's a kind of a. Well, it has my shoulders. <laughs> All right, we named it 405. <laughs> Little 405. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, smart too, smart as a whip. Got a great potential growing up with a mind like our little 405. <laughs> I mean, who, who knows how far in life little 405 could go? San Diego, <laughs> Sacramento. The only worry we had is that we have a mixed marriage. And we wondered how we would raise the highway. <laughs> And we finally decided that if the highway's mother was Jewish, the highway would remain Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been an actor for a long time. I'm an actor. It's a noble profession. Uh, I'm a thespian. I know some of you know that thespian is just another word for actor. Others may think it's a lesbian with a lisp. <laughs> But I'll just tell you in a moment before I leave uh, something about the word thespian. Years ago, when theater kind of was begun in ancient Greece, people would sit on rocks on a hillside, there was a flat piece of ground, and that was the theater. And all the, all the information in the show was done by a Greek chorus who spoke in unison. One day, after many, many, many years of doing that way, from the chorus, the Greek chorus, stepped one man in person stepped forward and delivered a line of his own. He was the first one to speak out of the chorus. His name was Thespis. And I know about this. I was his understudy. <laughs> Today and Saturday and uh, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday at the Rogue Machine Theaters on Pico. I'm going there <laughs> soon from here. Okay. Do a five o'clock. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank
appreciate you being here. And if you guys want good theater, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. You can see it in our last show. Yeah, if you're interested, it's the Rogue Machine Theater. The Rogue Machine Theater. And it's tonight, today and tonight and next? Yeah, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Okay. It's really cute. It's well done. So thank you, Paul. Thank you.